OK, I'm going to give you some ideas for editing low light, urban and architecture imagery in Affinity Photo. So settle in because it's going to be a bit of a long one. Now I've loaded in my raw file of a photograph I've taken and one of the fairly unique things I like to do is make my raw file pretty flat and actually do most, if not all of the tonal work in the main photo persona. So to help with this, I do a couple of steps in develop. And the first is I turn on clipping warnings up here. So we can turn on clipping warnings for highlights, shadows and tones. So my aim is to reduce these and possibly eliminate them altogether. Now, by default, Photo also applies a tone curve to RAW files, which results in us having to do less tweaking for a punchy result. I don't want this, however, as I prefer full control over the tones. So I'm going to disable it by going to the Assistant options up here and changing from Apply Tone Curve to Take No Action. And you'll probably see just a little bit of a, a tonal shift in the image there. So next, then, I'll check Shadows and Highlights here and I'll drag the Highlights slider all the way to the left and that actually eliminates all of my clipping issues. So across on Details as well, what I like to do at this stage is just add a small amount of luminance noise reduction just to clean the noise up a little bit and then back to the basic panel. My final step is to check Profiles and change from sRGB to ROM RGB. Now this needs a little bit of explanation. Photos Develop Persona works in a full 32-bit float pixel format with a linear color space. This means while we're developing this raw file, no data is being clipped out of range or permanently lost. However, when we click this blue Develop button, Photo will then typically convert the document to a 16-bit integer format with a standard sRGB color profile. Now, in most cases, this is fine, but during the conversion to sRGB, we could potentially be throwing away color values that are out of that range. To combat this, I like to change my output profile to ROM RGB, which is similar to ProPhoto. This is a much larger color gamut, and it means we're far less likely to throw away color information in this image. I don't want to get too bogged down in this video about color spaces, but I will just say that RAW files can potentially contain pixel color values larger than the gamut constraints of sRGB. So it makes sense to work in a larger color space whenever we can. There's no performance penalty, and the benefit is sometimes obvious with artificial lighting, which we tend to see a lot of in low light imagery. Enough of that then, let's get cracking and I'll click develop. Now you can possibly skip this step. I shot this using the high res mode on my camera, which means we have an 81.04 megapixel image to work with. I don't actually need this much resolution. So what I'll do instead is downsample it for a much sharper but smaller image. So I'll go to resize document on the document menu here. Okay, I'll resize to 6400 pixels wide and it will automatically calculate the height. Then for the resample method, I'll choose the sharpest available, which is Lansos 3 Non Separable. And that should give me a really nice, sharp and clean downsampled result. So first up then, across on the Layers panel here, which I'm going to keep open, because we'll be doing a lot of work with layers, I'll add from the Layer menu, New Adjustment Layer, I'll add a Brightness and Contrast Adjustment. I'll bring the brightness up and punch the contrast up as well. Okay? So remember I said I like to do most of my tonal work in the photo persona. This is a classic example. This adjustment is probably going to sit on top of a lot of other layers in the layers panel once we get around to adding them. And it's going to act a bit like the tone curve that I chose not to apply. So next up, I'm going to do some in-painting work on this image to remove the crane here. But I'm going to do it non-destructively. So to do it with this approach, we can select the background pixel layer, create a new pixel layer here. Then I'll click hold on the retouching tools, select the in-painting brush. Okay, I'll just increase the brush width 
using the right bracket key. And then crucially for this to work, we need to change this option here from current layer to current layer and below. Then all we need to do is just brush over the crane and release. Okay, and you can see the thumbnail here for the pixel layer. So if I go ahead and hide that, we can see we haven't changed our original background pixel layer at all. We've just added a pixel layer on top, which happens to now have the in-painting work on it. Okay, I'll just fit to screen using Command-0 or Control-0 if you're on Windows. Next, I'm going to tweak the overall tones a little bit. So to do this, I'm going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and add a white balance adjustment. Okay, and I'm going to knock the tint slider back to about minus 20. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave it like this, but I'm going to introduce what are called blend ranges in Photo. So if we select our layer and then click the little cog icon here, we can access blend ranges. So these allow us to determine how the layer is blended into the layers beneath it based on tonal range. For example, if I just move this, I can grab this leftmost node here for source layer ranges and drag it to the bottom. And then for underlying composition ranges, I can perhaps drag this one about halfway. And then we'll be able to see if I just zoom into this area and I hide this adjustment, you can see the yellow cast here. If I just turn this adjustment back on, you can see now we're just tinting the midtones and highlights in the image slightly. Now it's time for a more dramatic tonal change. So once again, I'll fit to screen. And this time I will add from the layer menu an HSL adjustment. Okay, and I'm going to grab the saturation slider and bring it all the way to about minus 65. Next, across on this drop down here, I'm going to switch to target the yellows in the image. I'll perhaps knock the saturation back even further, but also increase the luminosity. And you should just be able to see it's relatively subtle, but we can just enhance these tones here. Next, then, I'll shift across to blues. And let's take a look down here. I'll increase the saturation to quite a dramatic degree, and also maybe just bring the luminosity up slightly as well. But also, we'll get rid of this kind of purplish tone to the blues by using the hue shift slider, and instead have a, a nice sort of teal look going on. Okay, so next we're going to enhance these pools of light using some brushwork. So to achieve this, I'm going to create a new pixel layer. Uh, let's set the blend mode to overlay and bring the opacity down to about 50%. Okay, then I'll select the paintbrush tool. Our defaults here aren't suitable, so let's bring the hardness down to 0% and that gives us a soft edge brush. But it's way too small, so I'll increase the brush width using the right bracket key. Perhaps reduce it slightly. Okay, that will do. Okay, so then I need to sample one of the existing colors here. And to do that, let's sample one of these. I can Alt or Option click and hover over a suitable color. I want something fairly bright. That will do. And then release. Okay, across on the color panel here, we can just uh, verify that our color has now been set to the color we sampled. And as you can see with a real time preview, I can just paint across these areas here, like so, just to enhance those blue tones. And let's add some toning up here, why not? Okay. So we'll do some more work on a new pixel layer. So once again, I'll create another pixel layer here. This time I'm going to set the blend mode to reflect and bring the opacity down to about 20%. And I'll just go over these blues again to deepen them and enhance them, like so. Then additionally, on the color panel here, I'm going to change to a, a sort of a near white color with perhaps a slight blue bias. Well, perhaps not that much. 
I'll try and make it as white as possible. There we go. And then I'm just going to paint over the reflections here as well. Okay. While I'm here, I can also just paint over areas on the building to kind of bring them out. Bear in mind, this is still using the near white color on the pixel layer with the reflect blend mode. Okay, let's do the, the gates down here as well. And perhaps this sign. Good, okay. So now we're going to further enhance the colors, and this time we're going to use a selective color adjustment. So across on the layer menu, new adjustment layer, and we want to find selective color, there it is. So first we want to target the blues. And let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing more clearly here. I'm going to bring the cyans up, reduce magenta, and then reduce yellow all the way. And again, this just further enhances those blue tones and makes them really stand out. Now we can also add a bit of an intentional color cast to the tonal ranges here. So let's move across to neutrals and we'll drop the yellow contribution slightly to about minus five. So this just cools the image down slightly and further gets rid of that yellow cast. Then if we switch across to blacks, will perhaps add a tiny bit of magenta. Not that much, maybe about 3%. There we go. Okay, and as if we hadn't pushed the blues enough, we'll add another HSL adjustment. This time I'm going to use the shortcut key, so I'm going to do Command U or Control U if you're on Windows. And we're going to target blues again and push the saturation even further although it's starting to look a bit overcooked now. Let's also just push the luminosity up as well to brighten them. All right, we're on to the finishing touches now. So I'm going to selectively sharpen up areas of this image non-destructively. And to do this, I'll select the background layer here. Then I'll go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, and I'll choose an Unsharp Mask Filter. Okay, so I'll set the radius here to one pixel, tab to automatically select factor, and I'll type four and hit return. All right, so that's a very sharp image at the moment, but we're not going to apply it to the entire image. So with the unsharp mask selected down here, I'll go to layer and invert. Okay, so that's inverted the mask, which means it now has no effect on the image. So making sure I have the paintbrush tool selected again, I can change my color here to pure white, and any areas I paint now will add back into the mask layer. So you can see here, we get a real-time preview, just these areas up here that become sharp as my brush moves over them. So what I'll do is just increase my brush width for a massive brush and just block over these areas of the building that I want to sharpen. And I'll do the, the floor as well here and the top of the building. Okay, so while it's not really a big deal in this image, if we have images with noisy skies, we generally want to avoid over sharpening them and revealing the noise further. So this is a good habit to adopt for general image editing. Finally then, let's do some perspective correction. So once again, I'll select the background layer, go to layer, new life filter layer, and I'll choose a perspective filter. Okay, the grid is useful, but I tend to uncheck show grid to get a clearer view of what's happening. Now, additionally, we also need to drag this filter to the very top of the layer stack because I also need it to affect the pixel layers. 
Otherwise, things will start to look a bit odd because the base image will be transformed, but this in-painting layer, for example, won't be. So things won't be synchronized or aligned. Anyway, this is really easy. I just click drag the perspective filter, move to the top of the layer stack and drop it there. So all I want to do here is correct the kind of leaning effect as a result of shooting from a close distance at ground level. Nothing too extreme, I just want to even up the building's verticals slightly. And we can do this very easily. I'm actually going to turn on snapping here, which will allow me to drag these nodes and keep them level until we're kind of happy with the end result here. OK, I'll just hide that and switch to the hand tool up here. So now this is the great thing about having perspective as a live, non-destructive filter. I can look at this result and then I can hide the perspective filter. So I can analyze it and really fine tune the end result. If I feel, for example, that I've got the perspective slightly wrong, I can just double click it and go back in and tweak it again. Again, I'll just uncheck show grid so we can see what we're doing. But I'm actually fairly happy with that result first time round, so I'm not going to touch that. OK, so a callback to when we first started editing this image is I had that brightness and contrast adjustment. So having done all of this additional tonal work and some brush work, uh, let's say, for example, I want to fine tune my overall toning of the image. Perhaps I want a bit more contrast, for example. There we go. I much prefer that. Perhaps maybe bring the brightness down slightly. There we go. Good. OK, I will settle for that result. And there we go. One completed image. I hope that's helped to demonstrate a few useful techniques when it comes to editing this kind of imagery in photo. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.